So before we actually get started with formally learning how to program with Scratch, I think it's worth taking a few minutes to talk about the background and the history behind Scratch. Now, strictly speaking, none of this is necessary to be effective at teaching Scratch. But I think it's helpful for you as the teacher to sort of understand what Scratch is and what the creators of Scratch have in mind for Scratch and, and a little bit about sort of why Scratch in the first place. So what is Scratch? Scratch is an ongoing project that came out of the MIT Media Lab uh, in 2006 originally. And uh, it's currently maintained by the Lifelong Kindergarten Research Group at the MIT Media Lab and the UCLA Graduate School of Education. And they continue to update Scratch and develop some of the resources for teaching and learning with Scratch. Scratch is a free programmable toolkit that enables kids, and I, and I put kids in quotes here on purpose because while I think the target audience for Scratch is probably kids in the 8 to 18 range, uh, I use Scratch with my college students. I know adults who program regularly in Scratch for, for fun. And, and they do so because Scratch is a graphical toolkit that allows people to create animated stories, interactive artwork, video games, and, and most importantly, and one of the things that's really a fundamental background idea with Scratch, is the ability to share creations with one another over the internet. That's an important uh, component that the developers of Scratch want to include with Scratch. If you look at the logo at the top of the screen, it says Scratch, imagine, program, and share. And that's really the fundamental mantra and idea of the, the team that works on Scratch. The idea is, can we have kids, can we give kids the ability to sort of think of, well, what would happen if, what would I do if, and come up with this really cool idea, whether it's a game, a story, artwork, whatever, to program it in an environment that's appropriate for their age level and appropriate for, for, their, for that level of thinking, and then be able to share it with people. Because the real power comes not just in the generation of the program, but in the ability to interact with others and their creations and have others commenting on your creations. Scratch actually got started and it builds on this uh, this idea of logo and so most of you probably don't know a lot about logo. You may never have even heard of logo. Uh, logo was developed by Seymour Papert in the late 60s and it was divine, designed by Papert and his students and his colleagues to be an easy way to introduce programming to students. I mean that's really what he was going for was introducing programming to kids and it worked with the idea of what started out as turtle graphics this idea that you're controlling a little turtle that could be uh, given simple commands to move around on the screen so you tell the turtle to go forward turn left go forward some more and the turtle left lines on the screen it drew out shapes as it goes Scratch actually has the ability to do this. When Scratch first came out, uh, that ability was much more prevalent. Although it's it, and it's still there now, but it's a little more hidden. Um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that later in the course. But that is all there. Uh, and Lego sort of sort of built on this idea as well with the Lego Mindstorms robot. Uh, right, this idea of really simple sets of controls to to move the robot around on the screen. So Scratch takes advantage of lots of more modern computational ideas, though. The idea of video games with, with sprites and sound effects that moved around and interacted, uh, move around and interact with each other, uh, move around and tell stories. Scratch takes advantage of all of those ideas and some new capabilities and makes it really easy for kids to get started with programming. You see in parentheses there, you know, we talk about this idea of really low floor. Um, my experience has been that kids just sort of can start working with Scratch almost 
immediately without thinking about it and being given very little introductions to it. So it's got a very low floor in that regard. But what's really nice about Scratch is it actually has a fairly high ceiling as well. Students can actually create some fairly advanced fairly complicated programs when they're ready and when and, and if they choose to do so. And so that's what makes Scratch a great tool for the elementary school uh, environment where you have a lot of students with a lot of different capabilities. Everybody can get started and the kids who understand this can excel very very quickly and learn uh, about new features very very quickly. Again, what's wonderful about Scratch is it's really easy to introduce. Um, it's primarily done by connecting together graphical blocks. Um, I, I talk to my students about the fact that it even looks a little bit like building a stack of Legos, right? They're, they're inverted, but, but you can see this idea of kind of snapping together a stack of Legos. And when you read down this, this page, you can see exactly what the program is going to do, right? Forever, I want you to move 10 steps one direction, play a sound, move 10 steps the other direction, play a different sound, and just keep doing this over and over again, right? Almost anybody who can read can look at that and have a comprehension about what this programming, what this program is going to do. But what's even better about this is because it's graphical like this and because there's a limited number of places where typing is involved, there's a couple of, of real strengths here. Number one, it's almost impossible to get syntax errors. Um, I mean, basically almost every program you write will execute. Now it may not do what you want it to do, but it's almost impossible to get a program where the computer says, I can't do this. It's technically possible, but it's, but it's pretty rare. Um, and so because of that, kids don't have to worry about is the comma in the right place, is the semicolon in the right place. The other thing is that kids don't have to remember the exact wording of a particular command. Right? Everything is there in blocks. I don't have to remember that it's the move 10 steps block. I just have to be able to find the move block from the, the menu of options. Right? And so we talk about the difference between recognition and recall. Students don't have to recall how a command works. They only have to recognize how the command works. And that makes a huge difference in their ability to move forward in programming very, very quickly. The ultimate goal in all of this is to give kids an environment where they can become fluent with digital media, where we can empower them to express them themselves in whatever manner is appropriate for them, whether that's music, whether that's storytelling, whether that's video games, and to make it easy to make connections to ideas, whether it's about computer science or whether it's ideas in science, social studies, English, all of that will come up throughout this course, but I wanted you to sort of have that, that framework as we get started, right? That's our ultimate goal with Scratch. And so we're going to move forward with that right now. And when you're ready to move on, please click on the Advance to Next Lesson link just above this video on the page. Move on to getting started with Scratch.